Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So today I got a video for you that's really just about something that I ran into today when I was trying to test out um, a machine learning DAG, and that is how do I connect to my local Postgres database so I can just quickly and easily load some data into it, check the schema without having to fuss around with execing in you know PS SQL and using terminal. I know some people love using terminal in the CLI. I'm not one of those people. Um, so today what I thought I'd show you is, and this is kind of in the context of Airflow and that we'll be using uh, this dbeaver to exec into, or not to exec, but to monitor and add data to the local uh, Postgres database that comes with an install of an Astro Docker image. Um, so what that looks like in practice is basically a Postgres database that is being hosted on my local machine on port 5432. Um, and so, you know, typically what you could do is you could log in using the command line interface, run some Postgres statements there, but it's kind of hard to monitor um, what you're doing. So in my case, I was trying to create a table to do then populate with data um, from a CSV, but whenever I created the table and then tried to populate it, uh, it wouldn't actually, it would just mark that table as not existing because it had all null values. Um, now I'm sure there's other ways to fix that, but I figured why not just find a way to just graphically interact with that Postgres database. So after some digging around, found dBeaver, which is just you know free open source tool. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. Um, and so what I did was just figure out, hey, how do I connect to my local Postgres database, load this CSV of the classic Iris flower training data um, for my DAG to be able to run. Um, so what I did here was just, all you really need to do is download dBeaver, um, mark that, hey, this is point or port 5433. Um, and then what you'll do is go into your connections, create a Postgres database, and this works with every database it looks like that I can find. Um, and what you'll do here in your definition is, you know, use your local host. And then instead of that second um, port number, you'll actually use the first one. So port 5433, three. obviously if you're on a different port, um, you'll use a different port. And then all you need to do is just specify it's a Postgres database. Since I'm running it locally, it's running on the local host on this port. Um, and then you just have the default username and password for Postgres and Postgres. Um, so super simple stuff. And then once you've filled out these fields, it's already done, I'll fill it, won't fill it out again, your database should start populating on the left here. Um, and here you can open up your database just as you would, you know, like a Snowflake uh, UI where I can see my schemas. I can execute SQL statements to monitor and, you know, change this database, load files. Um, and I can see it all populate immediately. So what I was doing with the SQL statement was creating uh, my Iris data set. And you can see that here under Iris ground truth, where then I can also go in and see all the columns. Um, and what's also really useful about this is it makes uploading local CSVs uh, super easy. So something I've run into a lot recently, you know, just figuring out file paths when you're dealing with a Docker Airflow um, can sometimes be annoying. So a lot of people just host the file or pull it from API or pull it from S3. Um, when you're testing, I think that's kind of silly because why not just do the easiest thing and you can figure, you know, hey, how do I productionize the import of this file later on? Because that's a relatively easy step. You know, most of the time it's just pulling a location where it's hosted. Um, but here, what you can do is just say, hey, you know, I want to right click on this, import data, um, and you can bring in any local CSV file on your computer. Um, so just makes developing from a local data set super easy. And so what this really enabled for me was the ability to uh, run a feature engineering DAG here. So look at this ML flow example, um, where now before I was trying to fill around, you know, record this in the DAG, but now because I've already preloaded it, all you need to do is just run your DAG and your data is already there. Um, so it just eliminates one step uh, when you're trying to test, trying to iterate so that you can iterate faster and not have to worry about, you know, having to pull the data every time, just load it once. Don't have to have a load file function. You don't have to have a clean file function at the end um, for testing your DAG. And then, you know, obviously when you go to production, then you add those extra steps. But from right here, you can just load this, you know, here you can see the ground truth data set I'm loading up. Um, and then you can also execute SQL statements from a file. This is where I copied a lot of them from. Um, yeah, just a really quick and cool tool that I wanted to share with y'all. Um, I hope you learned something about this. And also one more thing, uh, 
you can also monitor all of your Airflow DAG metadata. So if you want to go, you know, look at your DAG logs, your, you know, DAG IDs, um, this is just an easier way to just, hey, go in and look at them without having to pull it from the Airflow API um, or try and exec into the database. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you today. I hope you learned something. I really did. Um, that's why I want to make this video for you. And uh, I'll see you later. Data guy out.